Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, Boss Nasty here, and I'm super excited to bring you guys this kind of jumper walkthrough video for what it looks like you going from day one to day 10 jumping process. And again, this is also going to be talking about it from the free to play perspective, starting our account out. We're going to be going through your top left, and then we're going to go here to settings. We will go to character management, and then you're going to scroll down to where you see create new character. Now, when you click this, it'll show you all of the kingdoms that are currently available for you to create a new account in, which essentially is all of them. Click here, then you click yes. You create your account, it'll then essentially populate you with a restart screen. It'll ask you to choose a civilization, then you go through the tutorial. We recommend Japan to start out with, and that's because you'll get an increased scout march speed. This is going to help you clear fog. It's also uh, faster uh, by 30%, which means that it's going to shave off about a third of your overall time that you're going to spend unfogging in the Second Kingdom and also scouting caves in the Second Kingdom as well. Now, the First Kingdom is not going to take you that much time to do. The Second Kingdom is really the most important. This is what your Second Kingdom is going to look like. You're just going to have to do a near 100% unfogging clear and then also do things like uh, visit villages and, and, and scout caves and you can even see a village here, right? These things are easy. You click on it, you get the reward, you're done. Caves, you have to click on them and then you have to go scout them out. So essentially what it'll look like is something similar to this, right? You'll see this area, I'll click on it, it says Explorer. You, the, the cave will be pretty much about the size that this will, that the village will. You'll click on it, you'll search it, but always keep in mind it takes time to get there. Now you can either go through the process I did by clicking the fog, or you can just go through your scout camp, which is here. You'll click this telescope, explore, it'll take you to where you want to go, and then you just click send, and it does it for you. After picking Japan, uh, then once you get to City Hall level 10, our recommendation is to go to Germany. And the biggest reason for that is because you'll get 5% training speed, but you'll also get 10% AP recovery, action point recovery. And that is going to do something which you can find here by clicking on your avatar. And on your avatar, you'll see your action point gauge, which is at 1,000. This is what you need if you want to do things like fight barbarians on the map to essentially give your commanders experience, and you also get free resources from killing them as well. You'll notice that when I click on it, you'll see here in the bottom right, action point cost is 50. It is also okay to start with Britain, and I'm sure that you've seen other videos from players that have recommended doing that, mainly because you start off with Boudicca. I do want to put a small asterisk here, is that you are eventually going to level all of your epic commanders. You'll eventually max all of your epic commanders, uh, you'll max out their skills, you'll get all of them to level 60 eventually, and these things are going to happen sooner than you think they will. But we do recommend starting off with Japan and then eventually switching over to Germany. Again, Britain is okay too, but our recommendation is Germany for those points above. What are some of the things you're going to be focusing on in the, in the beginning of the game? Well, outside of the ones I just mentioned, right, you're going to be trying to get your city to City Hall level 7. And that's because if you go past 7 to 8, your beginner teleports that you get here, which you'll see last exactly 10 days, mine is right now at 9 days, 23 hours, and 26 minutes, you will not be able to use these anymore. You're going to be working on leveling up all your buildings to City Hall 7. Definitely you want to make sure that you're prioritizing and starting with your scout camp and do everything in order that the City Hall tells you to do. Right. So eventually what will happen is when you get this to a, a couple levels, it'll tell you, well, you have to do your barracks or you have to do this before you can do this. Right. So always go off of that. Always train troops. Never stop training troops. And every time your action point gauge hits this 1,000 out of 1,000, go hunt some barbs. Keep trying to hit higher barbs and higher barbs and work on that in between. You'll eventually also want to level your peacekeeper in command. They're going to be able to help you reduce the action point cost from the barbarians that you're hitting. So we'll use Boudicca and we will then go to talents and you'll notice here that uh, insight. This reduces the action point cost to attack barbarians and other neutral units by 10. So eventually you're going to want to upgrade your peacekeeping commanders uh, to at least enough points to get that and then eventually to level 20 which will allow for you to unlock a secondary commander slot. What will happen is you'll click on this and then it, you'll see a plus sign to the right of your primary commander to where you can add your secondary commander. And that's something that you're going to want to do uh, because once you get your peacekeeping commander to level 20, which again it's okay to level them, uh, the recommendation, again, if you take a look at the, the jump guide that we have for our group, which I'll include a link, and also to our Discord in the 
uh, channel description below, um, does recommend you trying to max your first skill out. So there are some exceptions. Once you level up your peacekeepers, you're going to eventually want to start working on your gatherers. You're going to want to focus on leveling up the gathering skills, which again, just to show you a quick one, we'll go back to the, my main. And if we click on a gatherer, let's just click on a standard one here. We'll click on Joan. So you see these are your skills, right? You'll click skills. This will allow it'll tell you how many sculpts you have. And then this usually will tell you to upgrade. And then you just add points to these periodically as you get enough sculptures per commander. Now, Joan's second skill, which for most uh, gathering commanders is usually the second or the third skill, you'll notice that it says gathering speed bonus. So for this, once you uh, star them to two stars, uh, it will then unlock your second skill. For Joan, uh, and for most commanders, once you unlock their gathering skill and you max that to five, you don't really need to then continue investing experience tomes in them. You can just go ahead and level them up uh, normally through the second slot on uh, from using your peacekeeping commander. And, uh, adding stars. So for Richard, you can add stars. Now, you're going to have three tiered levels of stars, right? One, two, and I just call this three, just to keep it simple. Now, you'll notice that by adding one of these, I go 20, 40, 60, right? Um, for some of these other ones, you get a lot more than that. So let me give you an example. If I just invest five stars, and I get him, to, and this equals out at exactly two stars, I don't necessarily need to add this extra star, right? So this is by your, your, your min maxing is a term that uh, some players will use in ROK where you're, you're using the minimum amount to get the max end value. Well, when you're using experience tomes, right? If I was at, you'll see here is 18,000. If I was at 17, let's say 17,500, I would not want to then go and use, for example, a 20,000 EXP tome farming resources. Now, when you're starting off in a new kingdom, you definitely do not want to farm on enemy territory. If I zoom out just a little bit, you'll see that there's these lines here. This is uh, identifying alliance territory. So if you click on something here, you'll notice that the owner right here is the alliance tag. Uh, when you're starting out, uh, you do not want to farm on alliance territory. And that's mainly just because you most likely would get attacked and you want to try and essentially keep a low profile, right? So for example, you want to farm on neutral territory, uh, which if you go here, you'll see that this isn't inside any colored territory. And if I click on it, you'll see the owner says none. So you always want to look for resource tiles where the owner says none. Uh, attacking players. You don't want to attack uh, marches. You don't want to scout cities. Be respectful, especially when uh, you're in the game, which essentially means, you know, don't go mouthing off an in-game chat or talking trash to anyone, right? Drawing attention to yourself. These are things that are going to help you, again, be able to make the most out of your jumper account. This expedition. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. You'll click on uh, campaign which will eventually pop up for you here, and then you can click on Expedition. You'll start off number one. These will eventually give you free rewards, and then it'll, uh, it'll at, at one point allow you to access the shop, the Expedition shop, which will let you purchase free things with your Expedition coins that you'll get from clicking this button here where it says 1940 because we have to wait for reset. Um, that lets you collect coins from all of the expeditions that you cleared, and these are just another batch of free resources. Joining alliances. Obviously, I talked a little bit about in the beginning of if you have an opportunity in Season 1 to join an alliance, you uh, for some of those extra KVK rewards, you're going to do that. It's pretty simple. You'll see the alliance tab here. If this is closed, you'll just open it. You'll click alliance. And then it'll tell you this, you'll click join. Now you can do a couple ways to do it here. You can just apply, which is most of the way where you'll see me, right? I apply, this shows you the green check mark. You can actually apply to multiple alliances too, uh, but don't do that to spam anyone. Uh, or you can search the alliance name as well. So like this says Midnight Dream, just to give you an example. Let's type in Midnight. And I might need to do a capital, yeah, because it is case sensitive. So here. And in case you guys are wondering, I'm, I'm using an emulator here on the PC, which if you're interested, you can either check out Bluestacks by Googling it or Nox Player or Mimu. Those are some of the better ones. I'm personally using Bluestacks. But you'll see if I type in Midnight, it'll show Midnight Academy. If you're a player, you're a jumper group who's fortunate enough to join an alliance. You need to be very quick um, when you're going in and joining these alliances going through the process. Uh, what you're going to click on 
to get those rewards and then you needing to leave that alliance right away. This is going to allow for your jumper group to cycle as many players in. Um, and the other thing to keep in mind is that when you're joining an alliance, um, it is really a courtesy. That alliance gets nothing out of you joining them just so your jumper group and or some players can get free rewards. So it's always nice to understand that. So you'll click on your chat. Here's some kingdom chats. You'll see your alliance chat here, which you can see with the brackets. It's always nice to go in here and just say something like thank you. This is what you'll do to collect rewards, right? So you're gonna join, you're gonna go through the alliance process like I did, right? Except you'll most likely have to apply. They let you in. Once they let you in, you can then click on this icon, which is a temple, and then you'll go here to Crusader Achievement Rewards. You'll then click on Alliance. Any of the ones that don't have this, where it says Individual Honor Points, are the ones that you're going to be eligible for. So these ones will be highlighted, which, or um, they'll have like this, this little bar here. You'll click on that, you'll collect all the rewards, and once you do that, you will go here, you'll click back on the Alliance tab, you'll go here to the left side of the window where the two wheels are, you'll click Quit Alliance, yes, and leave. This is going to help maximize how many players in your group can get into an alliance to collect free rewards if you are able to. Now go into the name process. One of the important things is some of these alliances, if you're fortunate enough to join for Season 1, are going to ask you, uh, or they might ask you, for a list of player names. Now one of the things you should probably do with the moment you create an account in your first kingdom is you should go to edit your name. Um, now most players, again you can see I've already done it, but you will get one free name change that you can use in the beginning. You need to edit your name, and then you'll most likely have to send it to your alliance. I know we will be collecting those from players uh, to help smooth the process out. You want to save all your resources, right? So all of your resources that you get, whether it's keys, um, whether it's like these things, right? If you get resources that are items, right, do not use these. Never use these until you get to your third kingdom. Speed ups, never use these until you get to your third kingdom, pretty much for everything else. The, do not upgrade your tech at all to take advantage of your tavern chests, right, which is your tavern here. You'll notice that you click on tavern, you click on the magnifying glass over the guy, and you'll see where it says silver chest here. Um, you'll get a couple free ones every day, and it takes about five minutes for it to refresh before you can open another. I'll, sh I'll show you an example here. You'll click, five minute timer. This is the rewards list from gold chests. It means that when you open a gold chest, these are the legendary commanders that you have a chance to get. Um, this is going to be a small deviation, but the idea here is that you should never be using universal gold sculptures on any of these legendary commanders. These are universal sculptures that you can use to apply to your uh, legendary commander. So let me give an example, right? Cow Cow is an example of a legendary commander that you get from the chest. I would not want to go onto his skills to, for example, click exchange and add legendary commanders to basically where I'm converting one, uh, it's a one-to-one -one ratio, but I don't want to convert my legendary commanders to a cow cow sculpture because I get, I get these for free from the legendary chests. I would want to invest my, uh, uh, my legendary sculptures into someone like, for example, let's say YSG or Yi Song Gi, uh, because this is a legendary commander among others that I, that I do not get from the free gold chests that I'll get once I collect enough keys to open gold chests. Courier station is another thing that we wanna that we wanna utilize. Courier station is right here. Now with the courier station, this is the mysterious merchant, you will get a chance to purchase uh, things like RSS item packs, you'll get to purchase speed up, experience tomes, uh, gathering uh, boosts for certain resources, and you can use uh, resources like food, wood, and stone to purchase these items. Now when you're leveling up your jumper, you want to be purchasing um, essentially as much as you can a VIP shop. This is something that you will eventually have come available to you. Point recoveries, you always want to max this. You want to max your five point speed ups. When, when it's early, you want to max these as well, which is your universal stars, your legendary uh, sculptures, right? These are things that you want to be able to max by. What is your alliance center? Um, this is eventually something that you are going to want to have maxed, Alliance Center. So let's click on information here so you can take a look. Now, these are the times you can be helped. Every time you start a research or you start healing troops or you start a building upgrade, 
players can send help to you. Now, you always want to wait for the max number of helps per your alliance level before you start investing speed ups. And that's because when you get helps, it'll reduce the time, your, it'll reduce your research time, it reduces your building speed time, or your healing time. And so you always want to wait to get the max amount of helps before you use any speed ups. Um, if you're trying to place one well an event, or if you're just trying to boost to, you know, to CH22 soon so you can unlock your five marches. These are things you should be always trying to do no matter what, is your daily objectives. Now, uh, again, that's mainly because, uh, a couple milestones here. The 60 milestone is because you get the 100 basic uh, point recovery, and then 100, uh, you'll get gems and a gold key and a magic box, which for the most part usually is either going to be speed ups or AP potions, uh, at least in my experience, but can be other things. And you also get the epic uh, commander sculpture as well, which is going to help you off really early. One of the things we recommend doing is rushing to VIP 7 you will be able to get one free epic commander sculpture, a universal one, every day. So once you get to VIP 7, then we recommend saving the remainder of your gems and waiting for the more than gems event, or waiting for the Wheel of Fortune events to come up. You will have an opportunity to spend some of your gems to unlock uh, or also do a little more investment into skilling up a legendary commander. Uh, now, one of the first commanders you'll notice uh, that does come up on the wheel is uh, YSG or Yisongi. He will be coming up early. This is a great commander to take advantage of at least unlocking at the minimum for free-to-play players uh, caves that you're going to do. When you're in your first kingdom, you want to research high caves and medium caves. Don't worry about the low caves. When you get to the second kingdom, uh, we recommend doing it one of two ways. If you want to keep it super easy, just investigate high caves, maybe a couple medium caves. And when you get to the third kingdom, then you're going to uh, investigate in the order of high, medium, low. Now, if you really want to try to 100% the caves, you can, you can investigate 100 caves for the medium ones, but do not go over 100. Then once you get to the third kingdom, you'll investigate all the high caves. And if you do it that way, you should be at about 400 at that point. Our beginner teleports to get us from our first kingdom to our second kingdom, and then our second kingdom to our third and final kingdom, you will simply zoom out of the map as such until you see the globe icon in the bottom right corner. We will click this, and then as an example, uh, again, with your beginner teleports, you can only teleport to kingdoms that are in the nascent stage, or nascent stage, which is indicated here by your status. It also tells you that governors whose city halls are level 7 or lower can use beginner teleports to move here. All right, so you have to make sure that it says that in order to jump to your second and then consecutive third kingdom. So just to show you an example of us using it, you'll come to this screen, you have to meet all these requirements, and then you just simply click teleport. And you'll go through the process where it'll essentially do kind of a refresh or restart like when you make a new character on what you're going to experience in your second kingdom. Low heart trials. So explaining how the ROK event works. When you get into your second kingdom, you will have this Rise of Kingdoms event. Now when you claim these individual accolades, that essentially will add points to your chest here in the top right corner. If you claim any in your second kingdom, make sure that you do not claim the chest because then you will not be able to claim it in your third kingdom. Now, as you can see, mine says five. If I was to then use a beginner teleport from my second kingdom to my third and I did not claim this chest, I would still have five. This is so you can then max your chest on the third kingdom by investing and using some of your resources and items that you've collected from your first and second kingdom. With this, some of the things that you're going to be experiencing when you get to your third kingdom. Alliance gifts. These are something that you can earn essentially from attacking forts. If you have any spenders uh, that are in your alliance, if they buy things like chests or bundles, um, you may see that you'll get some gifts from them as well from their purchasing which does affect every member of your alliance which is why in some cases it's good for you to have the max amount of members because that just means that's the max amount of players that can benefit from getting some additional resources to help their progression a lot of our members are teleported on the edge of the territory 
This is because when you teleport on the edge of the territory, it allows for more RSS nodes to spawn on the inside. You also get increased gathering speed, and a uh, percentage of the resources that get from finishing the tile off will go towards your alliance bank. That'll help your alliance do things like build flags, it'll help them invest in their technology, uh, which overall ends up benefiting you as well. I know a lot of videos out there will recommend you rushing to your CH22. I just want to point out that there are two ways you can really do it. You can either go ahead and just YOLO, go all out, right, wait for your max helps, um, spend your speed ups, try to get to CH22 as fast as you can. Or, if we go to the city hall, you'll see that your troop dispatch queue. This is how many marchers you can have at the, uh, out on the field at a time, right? You'll see you get your second one at five, you'll get one at 11, and then you'll get one at 17. Now, if you want, most of the time after you max out a jumper, you should probably be able to get to 17. Uh, if not, maybe a little higher if you're taking advantage of your max helps, if you're doing things like getting runes before you upgrade buildings, uh, and, and just taking advantage of saving some of these things. The other route you could take is saving all of that, naturally upgrading everything without using any speed ups, and then save your resources for when an event comes up where you think you might have a chance of just investing everything uh, or a lot of some of your resources to placing high enough to get rewards. Let's go ahead and get into some. So you go top right, you'll click on your little bulletin board, right? And you're going to see some of these events here, right? One of them is, is going to be low heart trials and a few barbarians on the map to receive a special item event called bone necklaces. You use these necklaces to receive an abundant, uh, abundant rewards. Uh, and you also have a chance to obtain Lohar relics, including Lohar Lombar and Lohar Buckler. Um, so you'll use these to summon Lohar, and then you will uh, rally these Lohars uh, with your alliance, and it'll allow for you to get resources and Lohar sculptures. It'll allow for you to get Lohar sculptures, which you can then use to skill up your Lohar. Again, Lohar is another example, just like the legendary commanders that you get from Gold Chest. Do not invest universal sculptures into Lohar. You will get Lohar on the second kingdom. You will essentially, every time you get to 100% AP, always want to go out and fire barbarians as much as you can to try and collect as many of these necklaces as possible. But these are some of the things that you should be considering when you are uh, creating your accounts and for any questions please feel free to uh, post uh, questions in our discord and I will try to respond to questions uh, that are on the video comments as well we'll have a discord link in the description along with some other resources uh, and I, I hope I did a pretty good job of just giving you a general overview I definitely wanted to try to cover as much as we could and walked new players through somewhat of a full kind of walkthrough tutorial of what to expect in the first, second, and third kingdoms. Again, thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed the video, uh, and until next time.